morning, everyone. Uh, Fatima Saleh is my name. I lead the cholera case management for Nigeria. So it's an update on what we do. Permit me to give some history because um, it's good to have some background. Even though I know most of us know that Nigeria is, is a continent on itself. Uh, and that's also should impact on its disease burden and um, outcomes. Yeah, so this is the outline. I'm going to engage us. This is my country, Nigeria. As of 20, um, 29, sorry, 2019, 2020, you could see that the budgetary allocation for health has always been suboptimal. The Abuja declaration on budget allocation of 15% then, as agreed by the um, union, was 15%. But as we speak, Niger Nigeria, Nigeria's budgetary allocation still remain. Uh, let me be generous. As at 2023 years, it's been increased to 5.1%. So it's some minimum um, progress there. That's the life expectancy in my country as of 2019. And um, we are so diverse, so blessed. Huge um, variation in terms of culture, traditions, religious uh, affiliations and practices. You could see over 250 ethnic groups, more than 300 uh, languages. And uh, of course, the estimated population, it's close to 230 as we speak. Um, it's three tired kind of government uh, healthcare delivery system. You have from the lowest to the uh, highest uh, um, tier. That's the, that's the local government, the sub the states, then you have the national at the, uh, that's the highest uh, governing body. It's, the health sector is actually um, overseen by the Federal Ministry of Health, now known as the Federal Ministry of Health and Social Welfare, uh, a nomenclature that's just changed recently in this um, political dispensation. And um, the minister is the highest uh, body there. Uh, in terms of um, healthcare delivery, we know government is not the one doing it alone. We rely on partners and civil society organizations and non-governmental organization. So this is basically what I have said. The highest body, the Federal Ministry of Health and Social Welfare, is involved with policy decisions across that uh, tire, proposes legislations and all of that. At the state ministries of health, of course, as with other countries here, uh, our health system is in the concurrent, so the health, the, um, so the governments at the state level provide um, health care services also because it's within their purview to do that. The primary health care centers, of course, that's the lowest level of care at the community level, uh, um, according to uh, the slide there. So uh, just a bit of, in terms of public health, ours is so much around um, Infectious disease burden. We saw the unprecedented cholera of 2021. I mean, not uh, outrightly say the figure there, but it was really unprecedented. We had huge cholera outbreak in 2021. Our COVID, those are the numbers there. We were also ravaged by an emerging monkeypox that was so dormant and emerged in 2022. Uh, of course, recently diphtheria. As I speak, a lot of um, 11 states and LGEs have been reported, and we've activated our emergency, uh, that's the incident management system as we speak, and the frontline workers have been deployed to, uh, you know, help in the control of diphtheria. So basically, that is it. In terms of... Um, NCDC is the Nigerian National Public Health Institute. Uh, this is our story, but uh, just to say that we've been, the NCDC Act has been signed to law in 2018. And um, in terms of disease response and control, 
we have the IDSR mechanism that's the integrated uh, disease surveillance and control is a strategy adopted by Nigeria and the WHO member state which Nigeria also signed into that we've been doing it and it's been evolving over the years paper based now we are going into digitalization as we speak we have the electronic in integrated disease surveillance and response uh, system so and the guideline that um, guide that has also evolved over years uh, which will show uh, so the guideline is to guide the collation analysis and communication of health data especially of, of public diseases of public health importance because that's our purview more of infectious priority disease cholera csm measles diphtheria you know and, and the likes it's such that that data that has been generated is for action because over the years it's before the implementation of the IDSR is not so structured as we are going to see. But uh, when the IDSR came into being, uh, 1998, as adopted by Afro regions, you know, the surveillance uh, narrative changed, as we all know. So Nigeria was also part of that journey. In 20, 2002, we had the first um, edition of the IDSR technical guideline, you know that um, we use for reporting, collation, and analysis of our infectious disease data, which cholera is one of. Then the diseases were mainly the epidemic-prone ones, and those targeted for elimination and eradication and some diseases of public health importance. 2010, we saw expansion of the disease coverage in terms of non-communicable diseases and some uh, emergencies of international uh, concerns. And as we speak, currently we have the latest version, the 2019, which is the third edition, that has also factored into some of those emerging issues, the emerging issues and lessons that we learned from all of this outbreak to really improve on the technical guideline. So that is the evolution of IDSR. So we can't say talk cholera, disease burden, or even it's a clinical data, the variables being reported without setting the pace that this is the platform we're using uh, for that activity. I've mentioned all of this, it's just for emphasis. So the principle of IDSR is yeah, it's a strategy, but it's a kind of um, integrated approach. You could see, let me just uh, say a bit, the disease surveillance and notification officers, yes, um, they are the ones doing this work in terms of getting these diseases reported to the next level, at that lowest level. But it's an integrated uh, format in the sense you don't, they just, just, just don't do cholera uh, as a standalone uh, reporting uh, you know, to the next level. They also are involved in doing some of other priority diseases. Why am I saying this? So that we know the enormous work these people are, are, are doing. And that could also be responsible for maybe why we are not getting it right because they have been, been overworked. As we speak, we have more than 41 priority diseases that are being reported through this uh, mechanism in Nigeria. And it's the same people, same structures, processes, same resources, you know, doing all of this. So uh, it's the, the ideas are we all know it's meant to really make these things integrated instead of those vertical uh, formats we, we used to have in the years uh, past before the coming of IDSR, and the coordination is better. You see that we have, uh, we have such human resources in our database. We have a network, how we you know, communicate. We meet sometimes monthly, depending on, on how it, what it is and the context uh, we are having at hand. And um, we have also a network where we meet with some of them, the state epidemiology. So it it's enhances coordination, really and uh, integration of all of this. Just uh, to remind us that, yes, this is the format uh, of disease uh, reportage from the community, the local government, as we call it in Nigeria, the DSNO, they're in charge of that, you know, collect all of this data from the health facilities within that catchment uh, LGA to the next level, the state level, through the state epidemiologists, and then you get it to the national, the NCDC, which primarily uh, our mandate cuts up 
across um, epidemiology and surveillance of diseases. So with that, again, you could see uh, how that is also being done uh, with the partners. And a key uh, agency, the National Public Health, or the National Primary Health Care Development Agency, because that's the body that really is, uh, that has the mandate, you know, to really um, oversee the lowest level of care, that's the primary health care level and the community level, because they have all the structures and personnel in the local government levels that does all of this reportage. So this is just uh, the line list, um, just a sample of how we get these diseases um, documented and um, yeah, uh, communicated to the next level. This is the ba uh, paper-based formats, you know, before uh, the transitioning into the electronic format, uh, which is the one we are going to see in terms of SOMAS. Uh, we are now, we have digitalized our IDSR using the platform called the SOMAS, which is uh, an acronym for Surveillance Outbreak Response Management and Analysis System. Uh, thanks to the German uh, Ministry of Health and the people of Germany for providing this platform that we are using for such uh, activity. It's a real-time kind of, it enhances real-time. You could see once such variables are entered into such a platform, you'll be seated wherever you are. Once you have the assets, you'll be able to get all the data with all the variables. And it has an, a mobile application uh, platform and also a web base. Uh, it has a lot of modules covering even uh, MIE. You could, uh, um, pre, it pre-analyzes data, case management, contact tracing, name it. Um, it's, the modules are so, so flexible that you could create different modules of what you actually want. So we are happy to say yes for cholera case management. We are also beginning to leverage on this because it will really help us get real-time data to inform decision-making. So this is the advantage the SOMAS has over the paper-based standardization, of course, because these people are also being onboarded. They are trained on the use of this thing. So we are speaking the same language, communicating the same thing, same vocabulary. Nobody is left behind. So in terms of timeliness and completeness, because it's always been an issue with our paper-based surveillance, so this has taken care of that. Um, outbreak uh, uh, you know, information, manual data entry with the errors, definitely that is also being um, tackled. Rapid transmission, I mean, that is what it is. Better management of data in an automated fashion. Again, um, it has a lot, it depends on what you feed into that SOMAS platform. For us in the case management uh, pillar, you could get some pre-existing conditions, some prescriptions, you know, a whole lot of um, variables, including the age, the age uh, groups, the, um, which state I, uh, the person is from, the occupation of that person, the outcome, whether the person is alive or dead in terms of, you know, so many variables are also a part of that and uh, <laughs> clinical uh, information. So this is just a sample. Sorry, I, I, I don't have the, um, it's in a, as at the time of uh, computing this report, I was not able to get the focal person that has um, the former, uh, former um, um, that oversees some, as so to say. <laughs> so, but this is a generic data, a clinical data um, model that you could see. I mean, in 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 the in the summers. But I I, I can share that uh, with the. I got it just before I came here. Yeah. So, uh, where you have for cholera specific and all the variables that I've mentioned around the name, age, age distribution you know, signs, symptoms, medications, comorbidities, and all of that are in that cholera-specific model on SOMAS. So, 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 so this is just a generic uh, uh, um, model for that, just to give us that sense that, yes, uh, we are also leveraging on the SOMAS for our clinical uh, data. Yeah, so it's 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 so versatile that you could it's flexible for you to really uh, create such models for 
what's um, so uh, pinning down to case management uh, in line with I think global tax force on the overall this is our objective of the case management pillar is about reducing mortality <laughs> uh, you know specifically uh, you know it's to comply with the standard treatment protocols uh, of case management and the IPC because you know infection prevention and control uh, you can't talk of cholera case management without talking of uh, infection prevention and control. So as a pillar, actually, we, we often work together. Um, we also provide some off-site support from the national you know, to the states. It's not always that the nationals, uh, people from the national, has to move to the st uh, states. It's not really feasible. So most time, we do a lot, a lot of virtual engagement and provide off-site support, especially during outbreaks and all of that. We also uh, support trainings and supportive supervisions of clinicians. As we speak, we have this uh, um, a standard treatment guideline for cholera, according to our context in Nigeria, because uh, before now, we tend to see a lot of treatment protocols and guidelines being used by different levels of care, by different uh, partners supporting our work. So we we say, hey, let's come together and have a standardized treatment protocol that everybody uses, you know, just for standardization and uh, efficiency. So as at um, week one to week 20, 36, this is the, I'm not sure if the, <laughs> the global has this, but this is the case, uh, cholera cases that we're having in Nigeria. Uh, and uh, it suffices to say uh, those are the top 10 states that you know, um, reports uh, such uh, um, cholera cases. Yeah, so. so in terms of uh, the cholera case management in the treatment centers and the treatment units, uh, our scenario most often, uh, thanks to MSF again, because they are key supporters of case management when it comes to cholera, and they help you know, uh, putting up these uh, structures, the treatment centers, most often is within the health facility. in that's hotspots for cholera in a particular uh, uh, region. So uh, for this year, uh, we could say that uh, from week one to week 36, we had over 1,000 um, cases of cholera admitted in the cholera treatment centers. And that's the case fatality 2.4. Uh, we have these charges of uh, uh, over 1,000 as well. Uh, the recovery is 98, we could see from there. So in all again, for these uh, units, you know, the units are the smaller, the treatment units are the smaller ones, and we have 32 uh, since the beginning of uh, this year in terms of cholera treatment units in 25 states in total. And we've... Um, Admitted more than 1,000 again. You see, if you go 1,221, and, and deaths uh, recorded 44 deaths with a CFR of 3.3%. Uh, we, we had a total discharge of 1,277, and that's the recovery we are seeing there. So, in terms of um, community uh, reported cases, I, I have said it earlier. We yes, both our. Um, uh, we, 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 we have event-based surveillance and indicator-based surveillance, just like other countries. Uh, uh, and that also, we've been, you know, involving a lot of community focal persons. But as I've mentioned, this, this has not been standardized. It's not so structured, you know. Yes, the DSNO within that local government, within that community, you know, has some informants, community informants that he gets this information from and where he um, you know, followed up and do the needful and escalate as, as it should. Uh, you know, but this is not so structured. But I tell you now, um, in, in a few weeks, we'll be able to finalize our cholera um, community, I mean, the community-based surveillance um, mechanism for Nigeria. And that, I believe, we'll be able to see a better reportage in terms of uh, fatalities and all of that so but just to say that this is the much number for this year that we are able to get in terms of outpatient and community reported cases uh, you know 
also I have mentioned that we have standardized our cholera. It's now uh, undergoing some editorials. As usual, the response commodities have been, you know, uh, um, you know, we've been supporting the the states that have this high burden of cholera cases. Thanks again to MSF and other partners, uh, UNICEF and, and the rest. And also the, the fact that we're also mapping, especially for, as we speak, uh, Zamfara State is one of the states in the north uh, part of the country that also is still you know, having active cholera. Uh, so we're trying to, for an immediate next step for us before uh, even my travel is to map those um, uh, hot spots in this state. So for chlorination activities, just as a temporary, we know that's not the main, that's not the last thing, but it's something that we need to do. Of course, all of this is not with challenge. So some of the challenges are highlighted up there. Uh, but again, uh, as we continue to work with our partners, we are ensuring that our um, logistic chain, uh, you know, it's also been activated and we are doing the needful in terms of supplying such things as a such mechanism for states that are having these uh, active cholera cases. Of course, our lab, we, we can't uh, do it with our lab. To summarize, yeah, yes. so, and the designation of all of this. So basically, this is it, and these are our next steps. Thank you for listening.